I'm from a very, very conservative family, uh, strict parents. Singing is like a complete no-no. Uh, good girls from Achhe Ghar Ki Ladkiyan Gana Nii Gaati Hai. Or Mera Ghar Bohut Achha Hai. You have to see my music videos. Uh, my Ghar is the typical Achha Ghar. So it was such a, such a challenge because I had decided I want to be a singer. I thought I had singing talent and I had a lot of these ideas in my head which I thought made for a great singer. It meant you had to have great singing skills and that's it. People will come and say, come, we'll give you work, we'll make you famous. And I thought that's how it's going to be with my life. Uh, at my time, if you had to become a famous singer, because the thing is, you're always a singer. If you're a singer, then you are a singer. But we all want to be famous or we can all be just singers at home and we'll still be singers, but we want to be famous, right? We want to be stars. We want people to take selfies with us, take our autographs. So there were two ways of doing it in my time. Uh, you either go and become a playback singer or you become this big shot pop star, okay? So both of them required you to go to Bombay and I was in Jaipur from a very, very conservative family. Do you see what I'm wearing? This is what we wear for our weddings and this is what our mom wore at home. So going to Bombay and becoming a singer was like, no way. So I did one big con job <laughs> with my dad. I never took permission to go to Bombay. I told him I'll go to visit. I nicely went to visit. I took up a job in Bombay and then said, hey dad, uh, you know what? I don't think I'm coming back. Now, it was such a cleanly done thing because if I had asked him, it's very possible I could have been locked up in the house. It's very possible I could have gotten, you know, married off to some other Thakur and moved from my Haveli to another Haveli. And it would have been, you know, no one would have batted an eyelid because that's the kind of family I'm from. So instead of creating a scene at home and fighting and this and that, I just said I'm going to visit. I visited and I got a job and I said, that's it. The main thing that you have to do when you are rebelling against your parents is you have to make sure you have your own money, okay? Because rebellion doesn't work that you'll say, uh, Dad, I don't like your views, but I like your money. So you have to have your own money, right? Basics. Okay, so I had been uh, collecting money all this while. I had been working since I was in school and I barely attended college. So I had about 15,000 rupees. And I said, chalo, okay, that's enough. So I shifted to Bombay and I thought, now I'm going to send my demo to everybody and I'm going to be a star. No such thing happened. Uh, for two years, two years is how long? That's a really long time. I did not have the numbers of music directors. How are you going to go and tell people you're a great singer if you don't even have numbers of people in another city? It was not my city. Plus, I had to pay for my living, my lodging, boarding, eating. But the one decent thing I've always done in life, and any of you who want to be singers and actors, please go with money and start working. Don't get into this trap of I'm going to be a struggling singer or a struggling actor because everything requires money and Bombay is a very, very expensive place, okay? So anyway, I had the money and I had started working. But there was still a time when I had very little money and I had found this little dosa shop that, uh, that sold uh, uh, masala dosa for 10 bucks. So my dinner was set, okay, 10 rupees was all that I required for dinner. So I was very happy because I was staying in a good hostel and the salary that I was making, uh, I was paying exactly the same amount for the hostel that I was staying in. So money was tight. Anyway, and I was not going to take money from my dad because you know, izzat ka sawal hai. So uh, that's where I was stuck. Anyway, I started working, I got a better job, started getting more money and so that took care of that part of it, that I was not struggling like other people. Then I did one more thing, I started doing live shows. So by the end of it, by the end of those two, three years, I was actually making double the money that most strugglers do. I had a salary coming and I had money over the weekend from gigs. So each one of you, please understand if you're going to Bombay to become anything that you want to be, make sure that you have a job. Do not fall for those stories of hum to platform pe soye the or kyunke lakho log platform pe abhi bhi so rahe unki stories koi nahi poochta. Only when you become successful, people start asking you your stories. Otherwise, no one is interested in the story of a poor person sleeping somewhere or struggling to be somebody. So be very careful when you go out there, especially girls, make sure that you are financially secure.
Okay, so now the two things that I needed to become a successful playback singer or get a big music video were not happening. Uh, I had met a lot of music directors. I met the entire spectrum from the really creepy to the plagiarists to the really nice guys. Uh, and you have to be smart enough that there are enough creepy people. And they are not creepy people only in Bollywood. There are creepy people in the world. Okay, you are going to run into them everywhere. You just have to know how to avoid them. If you run into them, please be firm and say not interested. Why? Because the world is full of very nice people as well. I met some really nice people in Bollywood. So I met Ehsan, okay? And he's such a nice human being. I told him I'm from Rajasthan. I sing uh, Rajasthani folk and all. And he said, listen, just tell me, do you have enough money on you? I said, yeah, I have a place to stay. He said, I see so many singers who come from small towns. They don't have money to stay. They don't have money to eat. And I feel really bad. So it was really nice that I had started meeting the nicer people in Bollywood as well. But nothing was happening. So I said, OK, if playback is not happening, let me just go and do my own thing. Let me go to a music company and get my big video and be this big star like Adnan Sami, or, you know, the big guys. Now, I tried to do that, and music companies don't give you time of day. Why? Because companies only want famous people. Now, how am I going to become famous if no one makes me famous, right? So, this was a big catch-22 situation. So, what I did was, since I was working and I had experience in marketing, I joined a music company. I said, chalo, tum mere ko idhar se nahi aane doge, tum idhar se So, I started working in the music company. I understood the business, and that's when I realized that pop singers and pop boom had died. Uh, people are not buying pop songs. No, there was no money being made by uh, music companies. So how are they going to put money on me if they're not making any money? So, okay, now I again come back to the point number one, money. Everything needs money, investment. So I said, okay, so there's only one thing left to do. I'm going to make my own music video. I'm going to do my own thing. So all the money that I had collected in the world, I put in uh, recording a song recording an album and making a music video. The music video came out and uh, I said, okay, now it has to come on TV. And that's when I realized after the music video has been shot, all my money has been put in it, that uh, uh, TV channels don't play Rajasthani music. So I did not realize that, but I went to them and I said, but you play Punjabi music, you play Tamil music, why aren't you playing my Rajasthani music? They said, no, we don't. So all the money that I had had been put in that music video and it turned out that it was not good enough. So after the shoot, I had to change the song and make it Hindi. I mean, it was a terrible thing to do, but I couldn't, I mean, what would I do? So I turned it into Hindi, bought mehnat lagi, and it came out finally on TV, okay? Now, you know what my competition was? You cannot imagine who I was competing with once my promo came on TV. Aishwarya Rai, Dhoom Machale, okay? I mean, my song would come and after that would be crazy kiya re Aishwarya Rai. I said, you know what? Just commit suicide right now because <laughs> that is your competition. Once you're out there as an actor or a singer, then it's not like, but I'm not a actress, but I'm a little bit of Nobody cares. You have to be that big, otherwise no one cares. So each time Aishwarya Rai would come and my sister would almost have a heart attack and she'd be like, oh God, oh God, I hope that crazy Kiare doesn't come. But the promo segment was such that it would be my promo and then there would be two promos of Aishwarya Rai. So, okay. So I don't know uh, exactly what a nervous breakdown is, but after my video release, I was just sitting at home and crying and crying and crying and because I thought, that's it, I'm not getting playback. And my music video has flopped terribly and uh, yeah, I should just, just go home. I, had a, I have a very supportive husband who said, don't worry, we'll put more money. We'll do this, just, just hang in there. And you know your first music video, your first release, people say that it's like your first child. It's not your first child, it's your first love. If any of you have been in love and had a breakup, oh God, you think that you're just gonna die. And that's what I thought that, okay, it's over, my life is over, my music videos flop, no one cares. But you learn to love again and you learn to live. So I started working again and I said, because I'd left my job by the way, because I thought I'm gonna be a big movie star, uh, big singing star. So I said, get back to work, uh, get, get busy and keep doing stuff. So I continued to make my music videos, 
But now I knew that I'm not going to be this big star, not just yet. But keep trying, keep trying. I started doing publicity for movie stars, uh, which gave me access to the people in the industry because, hey, I still want to be a famous singer. And even if five people know me here today, hopefully everyone will know me later. So I still wanted to be in the movies somehow. And what happened was that my song started, uh, my friends in the industry started playing my songs on their, you know, like call a tune and stuff. So a couple of people got in touch with me and I started to get a little bit of work. So I did this big TV series called MTV Rush. Then I did this big movie which went to Cannes. It was Anurag Kashyap movie called Monsoon Shootout. Uh, Monsoon Shootout got lots and lots of accolades all over the world, did not release in India. So my big fat playback is still not released. Uh, MTV Rush shot me and then edited my song out. So the big song that I had sung in MTV Rush did not get seen by anyone. One more thing happened before that. I was singing in something in Blue Frog and there was this event manager there who said, I asked her, what do I sing? And she said, are you wearing the lehenga or na? So I said, yeah, but what do I sing? So she said, you sing whatever you want to. Okay. Then when we were putting the phone down, she says, you're wearing your lehenga or na? So I said, yes. And I understood that what I was singing was not as important what I, as what I was wearing. So now do you see why I am dressed like this and not in jeans? So this is a little lesson I learned, but still not fully. Anyway, coming back to selfies. So I said, okay, I hate selfies because I look fat in selfies, I look bad, whatever. But uh, I had a concert where I was wearing lehenga orna and I thought, let me just take a selfie video and see what happens to it. So I took a selfie video where this just just singing, okay, nothing else. And I put it out on Facebook. And it got 40,000 views and I was like, whoa, 40,000 is, I mean, for one Garib singer, 40,000 views is very big, right? So I said, not bad, there is something happening here for me. Now, by then, uh, that selfie video, by the way, got me Badrinath Ki Dulaniya, the song, okay? Because uh, a couple of music directors and lyricists, there's a lyricist called Vayu, who's done that song, But No Tera Saga. Everyone knows the song? Mano tera swagar lage sexy. That song. Everyone no, knows the song, right? So Vayu was the writer of that song and he was on my Facebook and uh, he saw it and he immediately called me and said, come, uh, we want you to sing a song for us. And that's how Badrinath Ki Dulaniya happened. I have four lines in Badrinath Ki Dulaniya, but that's like Alia Bhatt singing to my lines and that I thought that was going to be my big break because it's my big fat Bollywood movie for God's sake. I sang six lines in it, okay, and I thought, wow, my big fat debut has happened. And this happened like in January, so I was like, ab I'm going to become a big star. So I thought, chalo, things are progressing, but let's just do, everyone been telling me, take, do covers. One fine day I was seeing Cheap Thrills ka itna sara covers and I thought, there's no Rajasthani cheap thrills. Let's just try that. So I did the Rajasthani cheap thrills. And I said, I don't have budgets for it. I shoot kar leti hu. So I wore exactly this. And I sang cheap thrills with Ghumar Ko Lenjo. Okay, now that's both of these songs are very popular. Cheap thrills is very popular around the world. And Ghumar Ko Lenjo is a very big song in Rajasthan. On a whim, I did it. And then I thought, let me just scrap the video. Let's just not put it out because I think that people are going to laugh at me. But we said, chalo, laga dete hain. So put it out. And I thought, 40,000 views mil jayenge. Uh, it started to increase and uh, it's sitting on 1.5 million views. For the first time in my life, I didn't have to talk to a journalist. I just had news being written about me. I started going out and getting, people started taking selfies with me. So I couldn't go out without makeup any longer. And I... I just go in chappals and fatawa jeans as everybody else and I was like, oh my god, now I have to dress properly. So this Rajasthani cheap thrills happened for me and uh, I'm going to end this session by just saying a few things. Now Rajasthani cheap thrills is like any other cheap thrills, right? There is a Carnatic version, there is a this version, there's a Punjabi version. Why is Rajasthani cheap thrills so big? Uh, there's something that happens in Rajasthan. We don't speak our language. We have some kind of inferiority complex of speaking Rajasthani in front of other people. Parents don't teach Rajasthani to their kids. Um, the cool people speak Hindi if they're Rajasthani speaking and the really cool people speak only English. We do not speak Rajasthani. That's how it is in every household, okay? The grandparents speak Rajasthani but the grandchildren will speak only English. 
and once the song started getting viral i was like what is the big deal it's just another cheap thrill song and then i got the feedback from people and you know what the feedback was they said aapne rajasthani ko english ke level ka kar diya and in my head i had never thought rajasthani was less than anything in the world because it's my language and i i think in english and i english english rajasthani i think in three languages i had never in my life thought that rajasthani was a smaller language but clearly one and a half million people in rajasthani rajasthan think that rajasthani is somewhere lower and that somehow i instilled pride in them when i sang cheap thrills wearing this in my haveli in jaipur and this is what so many people told me aapne rajasthani ko ऊपर के लेवल पे कर दिया एंड आई वाज लाइक राजस्थानी कभी कम नहीं थी राजस्थानी वाज नेवर लेस देन इंग्लिश बट दिस इज व्हाट हैपेंड टू मी सो ऑफ ऑल द थिंग्स दैट आई ट्राइड फॉर 10 टू 15 इयर्स दैट आई वाज स्ट्रगलिंग टू बी अ सिंगर व्हाट एक्चुअली वर्क्ड फॉर मी वाज दिस द चीप थ्रिल्स राजस्थानी व्हिच अपेरेंटली मेड अ सोशल इंपैक्ट सो ऑल आई एम गोना से टू यू इज दैट यू हैव टू फाइंड समथिंग दैट ओनली यू कैन डू right now apparently no one else can sing english and rajasthani which i'm very happy about but now that i've given the secret out and the second thing is that what you wear your presentation makes all the difference i could have come today in jeans i could have come in a dress but i've come dressed exactly the way that you will notice me so when you go out in the world try and see that you are noticed your presentation matters and find something to do that nobody else can do okay i did not know that a rajasthani english mashup was a thing till the 1st of april and now it's the only thing and i'm i'm making a lot of money singing it so so that's my story and i hope that uh, i inspire a couple of you thank you